So the year is 2000. I'm 22 years old. I have a lot more hair than you see on my head currently right now. And it's my first year teaching chemistry inside room 206 at Sacred Heart Cathedral in San Francisco. And I feel like a complete and utter imposter. Confident that this room full of cynical, hormonal, attitudinal, Holden Caulfield-esque students are going to sniff me out for nothing more than the pre-med reject that I am. I make a slew of rookie mistakes I'm sure you can relate to. One of them being this feel-good tie. Check this baby out right on the front. Okay, An absolutely lame animal name game and a syllabus that declares me, 22-year-old me, to be the content expert in chemistry. Now, let me, let me make this clear to you. Hand me down tie from dad that he had to tie for me before I came to school. Okay. I'm asking attitudinal Cindy in the front row to come up with an animal that starts with the letter C. And the only feedback I get from this first day is something that I overhear to the extent of in the hallway. It's a true story. I wonder when the overeager beaver is going to give up and just teach us chemistry. Right? So to steal a word from my students, it felt super awkward. I was an imposter. Now, determined to fool them, I went home that day and did two things. First, I got my hands on the cheapest copy of AP Chemistry for Dummies I could find and read that baby cover to cover, trust me. And then I enrolled in six years of graduate school courses in education at the local university. And the next couple of years went a little bit better. Lame name games about animals became entertaining explosions of soapy methane bubbles. And I was actually able to stomach through a chemistry lesson about the mole, just Google it if you know what the mole is, without pretending I kind of knew what the mole was. Right? And, and sometimes I was even able to silence that inner voice of the imposter in my head. Other times, I felt absolutely paralyzed by it. So in 2006, when his voice was finally silenced, it blindsided me and hit me in the most unexpected of ways. So I'm a science teacher, so we're gonna, I'm going to take you back to that day in the classroom. So you guys ready? All right. So safety ga glasses. Thank you, Mr. Garrison. All right. So here we go. Silly putty that I bought from the grocery store. Orange candle. Lighter. Fire. Okay. Jar. I want you guys just to make an inner hypothesis. What's going to happen when I put this jar on this candle? Are you ready? All right. I know you're excited. What's going to happen? Okay, so raise your hand if your hypothesis was validated. Okay, great, great, great. So now I'm going to ask you another thing. In five seconds, or when I say, I'm going to say go here in a second, okay? And I want you to turn to the person next to you, and I want you to explain to them why, in 15 seconds, why that candle went out. Go. I heard a lot of rumbling about oxygen. Is that true? Okay. A lot. Of, I actually heard somebody say, the candle used up all the oxygen in the jar. And that's exactly what all of my students said as well. I'm going to take these off. Actually, I'm going to light some more in a sec, so I'm going to keep them on. Why not? All right. Seize the day. All right. So that's exactly what my students said as well, and that's exactly what I would tell them. I'd say something like, Yes, class, you are right. Oxygen is the limiting reactant in this reaction, and we run out of all the oxygen, yada, 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 insert more words to sound like a smart AP chemistry teacher. And 
in 2006, something was a little different. I heard a voice from the back of the room, and he said, Mr. M, I don't believe you. And the class looked at the voice, and then they looked back at me, and they looked at the voice, and they looked back at me, and I'm freaked out. Right? And the inner imposter in my head is saying something. He knows. They know. <laughs> They've seen the Amazon receipt. They know you read AP Chemistry for Dummies. <laughs> They've seen it. They all know. And just when I was able to BS the best answer, we've all done it. Oh, uh, you can't see atoms, so it is the oxygen, but how about this? We'll talk in your group or outside in the hallway after class. Right. Somehow, I pulled out of you know where the best two words that I've ever uttered as a teacher, and I think I ever will utter. I don't know how I did it, but I looked him in the eyes, and I just said, prove it. Prove it. And the moment I said that, it was crazy. Everybody was disarmed, and we all gathered around this table, and he showed me this video. This is an exact video from that day. Yeah, I'm ready. And he said, Mr. M., Check this out. I just figured this out. This is crazy. If I take one of the candles and I put it on top of a stopper, and this is true, okay, and I light it and I do this same experiment, something really crazy happens. Don't go out. That would be really awkward. Oh, okay. Sorry, internet world. This will work. Well, let's pretend we know. He said something really, really, really crazy happens. The top one goes out first. And he goes, I think that it's not the oxygen in there at all. Because why would the bottom one still be burning? He goes, I think it's the carbon dioxide that's putting out the candle. So I'm on a roll at this point. What do you think I say back to him? Prove it, right? So everybody goes off to their desk. And 10 minutes later, I get this video from his desk. And he said, Mr. M, this is crazy. I got all the carbon dioxide in the jar, and I put it on top, and both candles go out at the same time. It is the carbon dioxide. And we literally just start jumping up and down, the whole class. And we're like arm in arm. And we are one huge community, and it's amazing. And who would, I, I didn't believe that it was their knowledge, not mine, that would silence the voice of the imposter. It was crazy. And we haven't looked back since. Prove it prove it. It was the most important two words I feel like I have ever uttered as a professional educator. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes that imposter's voice still comes back, especially in July when the AP test scores come back, and I count the number of ones and twos I got. That imposter really helps me rationalize why those ones and twos were there, and really helps me pat myself on the back for those few kids that managed to get a five or a four. But a pedagogical model grounded in two words, prove it, not hear it, watch it, listen to it, prove it, is something that I really can get behind. So this summer, in a serendipitous moment, the stars aligned, and I found myself in the backyard with Jay Silver, whose video we watched here in Portland, Oregon. We were in, we were in the backyard, and we were talking, and I'll show you in a sec. And... Um, and we talked about our families, and we talked about our friends, and we talked about constructivism and Papert and Duckworth and Piaget and all this crazy stuff. And we talked about beer and talked about beer and drank beer. And, and it was awesome. And there was this 20-second moment in the conversation where Jay since magically encapsulated this journey of the imposter that I've been on. So I want you to listen very carefully because it's a super bad iPhone recording. That's all I had. It's natural for people who have already learned something to want to show what they've learned to other people. Yeah. Um, so it's a natural mistake to make, um, but people need to go through their own process. Yeah. I think that, that really puts it well. I think as teachers, we have a tendency to say, okay, we have this content and we want to transfer it to these people. And we're very proud of having this content, and we sometimes forget how they are going to best take that in. It would be great to transfer content to people if it worked. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
And that absolutely blew my mind. It would be great to transfer content to people if it worked. And I, and I thought to myself, it's so counterintuitive that the content as teachers that we have, that we're so proud of, sometimes is actually the very barrier in front of transferring that content to our students. So here I am, 2013, 2014 school year, and the College Board decides to drop on my lap a whole new set of AP chemistry standards. And this is what I'm teaching next week. Photo electron spectroscopy. And I'll be honest with you. I don't have a freaking clue what photo electron spectroscopy is. I know it involves photos, electrons, and a little spectroscopy sprinkled in there, I'm sure. I really don't have a clue, Sandra, I'm sure you could tell me, okay? Maybe that's a good thing, right? So a final message to students out there that are watching online or here in the room. Challenge your teachers. We need it. To the administrators out there, do you encourage your teachers to be vulnerable? We need that also. And to teachers, if the common core and myriad of all the other learning objectives out there, ask our students to do amazing things like build models, practice reflection, critically think, and perhaps most importantly, construct meaning from their environment, I think we should ask the same thing of ourselves as teachers. We are not imposters. Thank you very much.